Welcome to the Dietitian Side Hustle Podcast. My name is Katie Dodd and I'm a nutrition entrepreneur. I spent seven years as a side hustler before diving into entrepreneurship full time. Before making the leap, I was bringing in six figures through my side hustle. If I can do it, you can too. This podcast is for dietitians, interns, and students who want to be inspired to start or perfect the side hustle of their dreams. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to the 200th episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle Podcast, celebrating 200 episodes. You guys, I cannot believe that this is the 200th podcast episode that has hit the airwaves. So I'm just going to spend this episode kind of reflecting back on the journey, but I want to start with saying a big thank you to you. Thank you to you for listening to this podcast. Some of you have been listening since day one. You have followed me on this journey and what a journey it has been. Some of you are new to the podcast and welcome. You know, the podcast wouldn't exist if it weren't for listeners like you. So I always want to start with thank you. And I am so appreciative of you all. So the very first episode of Dietitian Side Hustle aired on November 10th, 2019. It was called Welcome to the dietitian side hustle. Now, during the week, I, at the time, I was working full-time at the VA doing home care. I had gotten pretty tired of listening to music. I um, eventually listened to every genre of music known to man, and I, probably too late to the party, discovered the world of podcasting. I had started doing side hustles myself. I was diving deep into the world of entrepreneurship, and one of the podcasts I listened to related to entrepreneurship is called Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn. And the episode I happened to be listening to in this, you know, early November 2019 week was called The State of Podcasts in 2020. And in a nutshell, what Pat Flynn was saying was you need to start a podcast. And I said, okay, Pat Flynn, by that Sunday, November 10th, 2019, the first episode of the podcast went live. Now, I initially started Dietitian Side Hustle as a hobby. As I was diving deeper into this entrepreneurial world, I just wanted to share with more people about all the cool things that we could do as a dietitian. So I started it as a hobby. Episodes initially were releasing once every two weeks because I was working full time and this was just a hobby. I never intended to make money through this brand. (laughs) I now do. This part of my brand is actually the bigger part of my brand these days. And I just had no idea when I started the direction that everything would go. So I guess even though I don't know Pat Flynn, I want to say a big thank you to Pat Flynn because had he never said start a podcast, this podcast wouldn't exist. And I know for sure my life wouldn't look like how it does now. So to start, what I wanted to do is I want to go ahead and share a few clips from the original episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle podcast. It's I think it's like five different clips. I'm not good at transitions because I don't edit the podcast. Other than, you know, like I'm clipping, but it's not like I don't have fancy transitions. It's only about three minutes, but I just want to show you guys some excerpts from the first episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle podcast. Welcome to the Dietitian Side Hustle, airing November 10th, 2019. Enjoy. Hey guys, my name is Katie Dodd. Welcome to the first episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle podcast podcast. I'm so grateful that you're taking the time to listen to this podcast and so excited for this opportunity to um, share all these things in my head that I want to share with you guys. So I want to um, start off by telling you a little bit about me. So I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. I have been a dietitian since 2008, so that's been um, 11 years now. And I have a full-time job that I love. Um, I think that I was really lucky that the very first job I ever landed, it turned out to be my dream job. I'd never heard of this work before. I work in home care. So I had never heard of dietitians working in home care, but gosh, I fell in love with my job and 11 years later, I am in the same job. So love my job. I am happy being a full-time dietitian in a traditional job, but I have an entrepreneurial spirit. I like to do things on the side. Nutrition is not just my profession. It's my hobby. It's what makes me excited. It's, um, it's just, it's what I love. In this podcast, I'm going to share, gosh, a lot of information. I think I've already written down, um, 50 episode ideas. So (laughs) I've got a lot of stuff bouncing around in my head that I can't wait to share with you all. Oh, what to expect. 
expect imperfection. I have made a commitment to myself that in recording this podcast, I'm only doing one take. If I mess up, if I say, mm, uh, if I forget completely what I'm ta- completely what I'm talking about, like right now, or if I jumble up my words, which I totally do, I'm not going to re-record. I am not going to spend hours editing this podcast because I think um, most of you listening, all of you type A um, personalities can realize it could probably take me five hours to publish a 15 minute podcast if I get too crazy with doing second takes, third takes, all these edits. So I'm just making this commitment to be imperfect. And I think one thing that I've learned on my journey, you don't have to be perfect, but you have to get started. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm getting started on my journey. I write every day. I have a podcast. I have a heart for inspiring, educating, mentoring, coaching students and dietitians. And I'm just so excited for this opportunity. Thank you for listening and tuning in for my first episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Okay, you guys, I hope it was fun to go back and listen to the first episode of the podcast. And I know I shared quite a few different things on there, but one thing I told you guys was to expect imperfection and the fact that I would only do one take on these podcast episodes. And I will tell you 200 episodes later, that is something that I've remained true to. Um, If you're a regular listener of the podcast, you probably periodically hear me mess up my words or forget what the heck I was talking about and then remind you guys I don't edit the podcast and then I keep going. So that is something that I um, did stay committed to as being imperfect. And I shared something on there that, you know, I hadn't listened to the podcast, the original episode until, um, (laughs) until today. It's been a long time since I listened to it. And I, I said in there, you have to get started. You have to get started. And I look back and I'm like, thank goodness I started. Had I not started with that little imperfect podcast episode, I would not be where I am at today. Now, I intended this to be a practice in perfect an imperfection because I knew that someday I would look back on episode one and think, oh my gosh, that was so horrible. Look how far I've come. Although I will say my mindset has changed a lot. I really believe that I just have to get started. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be crappy because someday as I get better, because I knew that the more I did something, the better I would get, I would look back and I would say like, oh man, look how much I've grown. But my mindset's actually changed. When I listen to that episode, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. And I no longer have like a negative self-talk where I criticize myself like I might have in the past. But a lot of that has been work on mindset. So even though I always plan like someday I'll look back at episode one and think, man, that sucked. I've come so far. I don't feel that way anymore. I I recognize I've come so far, but I'm so grateful for day one. (laughs) And even though it was the first episode of the podcast, it's not like it was the first time I spoke publicly. I, you know, had been doing speaking gigs and webinars and volunteered a lot within my job and within the academy. So probably going into the podcast, I wasn't as rough as I thought I was, but I'll be honest at the time, I thought that episode was awful. (laughs) I look back, I'm like, Katie, why are you so mean to yourself? For me, this has been one of the biggest blessings of the entrepreneurial journey is how much it's changed my mindset and my mental health and how much more confidence I have in who I am and how much more I value and appreciate myself and also this one life that I get to live. So kind of doing a few reflections of looking back to um, November 2019 to present. I'm currently recording this in April of 2024. It will air in May of 2024. And a lot of life has happened, you guys. A lot of life has happened. Now, my kiddos were much younger then. I mean, math is hard. I can't do this on the fly. It's been almost five years, right? It's been five years. Five years in November? Yeah. Almost five years, four, four and a half years. It's been a minute since I started the podcast. And so many things have changed from my children, of course, being older to really building on multiple streams of income. When I first started this podcast, I had my blog, The Geriatric Dietitian, but I didn't have a lot of traffic. It was less than a thousand visits per month. And little did I know that that little blog would continue to make more and more traffic and would eventually make thousands of dollars in passive income month after month after month. 
Little did I know I'd start a little program called Blogging Accelerator Program to help other healthcare professionals build businesses based on blogging, start the Blog Boss Mastermind, start all of these things that I've started to help more people to make more impact getting correct, you know, evidence-based healthcare nutrition information to the public. But then also how much it's changed my own life. I mentioned the confidence piece, my mindset piece, my mental health, but then also the fact that I left my full-time job. I started this podcast because I was a side hustler and I loved my job. But I'll be honest with you guys, and I suspect if you're a longtime listener to this podcast, you probably have figured out my personality by now. I am an optimist and I'm a very positive person. I don't think it mattered what my job was. I would have been on this podcast saying, I have the best job in the world because that's just my personality. <laughs> I've just come to accept who I am. So even though I really love my job, there were things that I loved more. And I, I think at the time, I just didn't, I didn't have any other framework. I didn't know what else was possible. I had no idea the freedom that comes in online entrepreneurship. So I really felt like a traditional job was the only way to go. Side hustle was great because it made me extra money. But when I record that episode in um, November of 2019, I had no idea that just a few short year years later, I would leave my full-time job and no longer be a side hustler right? I mean, I started to podcast dietitian side hustle because I was a side hustler. I had no idea that I would become a full hustler. That's what I am now, a full hustler. So when I reflect back on the journey, it's been pretty wild. All the changes that have happened in my life related to business, related to personal, related to mental health, it has been a journey and one that I am so grateful for. So a couple of things, I went back and looked through all my episodes, you guys, and over the years, I've had over 45 different guests on the podcast. 45 amazing humans who took their time to come on on the podcast, share their expertise with you guys. Initially, I was going to read all 45 names, but I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> so I'll just read some of them that, that I happen to jot down. You know, first I'll start with Liz Jalkowitz. Liz, the dietitian editor, she's actually the person who's been on the podcast the most. You guys probably know her pretty well at this point. Then we have Greg Todd. He is my business coach with Smart Success Healthcare. He's probably been on the podcast second most. And of course, I talk about him all the time. I've also had on the podcast um, Anna Reisdorf, Javier and Marissa Carlin, Amy Gorin, um, Whitney Bateson, Melanie Betts, Holly Larson, Christo with the Diet Dietitian Success Center, Alyssa Rumsey, Libby Rothschild, Stacey Dunn Empke, Laura Seanfield, um, Tony Stefan, Celestina um, Brunetti, Jennifer McGurk, Megan Bondiano. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not good with pronunciation. You guys know this too. Stephanie Claremont, just to name a few. There have been some amazing guests who have been on the podcast, and I have even more coming in the future for you guys. So I was reflecting back on what have been some of my favorite episodes, and I just went back to episode 100 because episode 100, I did celebrating 100 episodes and did a very similar recap to this one. So between episodes 100 and 200, some of my favorite ones that I've done <laughs> include episode 104, MS or blog business. It might have been a slightly different name. I just I was writing really sloppily. My notes are messy. So this was an episode where I talked about the difference between going back to school to get your master's degree or investing in building your blog business. And I created this when, you know, the rules have changed now. But when the rules were starting to change, when it came to the master's requirement for dietetics, you have a lot of dietitians who don't have master's degree who degrees who've been thinking like, oh man, do I need to go back to school and get my master's to like compete with other people who are now coming into the field with master's degrees? If, if you're feeling that way, go listen to that episode. My, my answer is like, well, no, you don't have to do that. And depending on what you want to do with your career, if you want to be an entrepreneur, we take a look at the time and money invested where if you go to school, you're going to come out credentials after your name. That's wonderful. Student loan debt and probably not more money. And we know that through the Academy's Comp and Benefit Survey. As of right now, hopefully it will shift, but right now there really is no difference between <laughs> bachelor's and master's. And there's so many other things that make an important difference between years of experience, work experience, specialty, all the things. But painting the picture where if you invest in building a blog business, taking an online program, learning from experts, putting in that same amount of time that you'd be studying to get that master's degree, by the time you would be done getting a master's degree, you would have a blog that is making passive income month after month after month. So instead of you paying to, you know, that student loan person, you got a blog paying you. So that was a really fun episode to kind of break down 
Um, you know, looking at, it was really comparing going to online school for entrepreneurship to going to, tradi- to traditional school. Cause I know a lot of people, it's like a very foreign concept to pay for an online course. When I first paid for my online course, my very first one back in 2019, I almost didn't do it. It was only 300 bucks. <laughs> And at this point, I've spent quite a bit of money in online education because that is how I have got to where I am. Going to school, I am so grateful for it. I do have my master's degree. School taught me how to be a dietitian. Online education that I pursued on my own. I'm not talking about CEU education. I'm talking about learning from people who are doing what I want to do. That is what changed the game for me. That is what enabled me to leave my full-time job, be a full-time entrepreneur, and have time freedom. So episode 104, that was one of my faves looking back over the last 100 episodes. Another one was episode 110, Flip the Script. And this one was all about limiting beliefs and all about those things that we tell ourselves, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, that aren't very nice. (laughs) They're, They're things that we tell ourselves about what we can or can't do. I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I always fail at this. And recognizing what are our limiting beliefs and then flipping the script. One of the cool things about being a human is that we could actually change our thoughts. And while it's not easy, it's something we might have to work on over and over and over again. I really love this episode because this is a topic I I really love talking about that we need to first become aware of what are the limiting beliefs that we have, then how can we flip the script, meaning, meaning like reverse it. If I tell myself, like, um, I'm not a good writer, flip the script. I am a writer. And then I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write. The more I write, the better I'm gonna get. And then the more confidence I'm gonna get. When it comes to this journey of business, it really comes down to mindset. It's this battle of you versus you and flipping the script. That whole episode was all about how we can kind of take back the battle in our brain to have success in all areas of life. The next episode, actually, this one's probably my favorite one I've done in the last hundred episodes. It's episode 135 called Beyond Okay. Many of you have listened to this episode and it's it's a different one. For reference, if you have not listened to it, I read a poem. I wrote a poem on a plane and I talk about some aspects of my life and of mental health, even though I'm super vague because I'm not able to share some of the details. I, I shared a a poem and kind of where I'm at in life. And I think my favorite thing about that episode beyond, okay, even though you're like, what does that have to do with entrepreneurship? It has to do with life. It has to do with us. It has to do with mindset. It has to do with pursuing our dreams relentlessly making the most of this one life we get to have. And I will tell you guys that episode was the one that I've gotten the most feedback of, of any, and a lot of tearful, but good tearful feedback of just that understanding of like, we're not alone. We all go through very hard life things and we're not alone and we're all going to be beyond okay. So that probably is the episode I'm most proud of and one that I I was terrified. If I'm honest, I was terrified to share that. And I'm so glad I did because I know that it, it, it allowed for connection with other people that probably wouldn't have come without that episode. And then finally, um, the last episode I will say that I'm most proud of in the last 100 episodes, I feel like all of them I love, but I, I had to pick a few, is episode 178, I Want You to Fail. I Want You to Fail. There's a theme, if you haven't noticed, all of my faves have to do with mindset. It has to do with me trying to help you to like shift the way that you think and then pursue things differently. Um, I want you to fail comes from this concept of, um, well, actually I won't share the whole thing, but really it came from a quote I heard that said, um, you need to build failure into your business plan and recognizing that so many people are so scared to fail that they never start. And I want each and every one of you to fail because if you fail, It means you've started. It means that you're going to learn. It means that you're going to grow. It means that you are one step closer to achieving your dreams. No one achieved big, audacious, crazy dreams without failure. And we go through life like trying to avoid failure, thinking like I have to learn all the things and get all the certifications and be perfect before I start. And then we start and we still feel like we're not good enough. I know this is a podcast, but if you're on YouTube, I'm making all kinds of faces. Anyways... If you didn't know, the podcast is available on YouTube, but those are my favorite ones over the last hundred episodes have been, again, episode 104, 110, 135, 178. If you haven't listened to them, make note and go back and listen to them. So let's talk about moving forward with the podcast. So moving forward, expect more of the same. I have no intention of quitting this podcast anytime soon. I look forward to celebrating 300 episodes with you guys next. Um, If I were to share some advice with you guys, I would say three pieces of advice I want to share with you guys. Get started, keep going, and get in the right rooms. 
this podcast has journeyed, journeyed, has followed my journey. When I started this podcast, I was making like, I think 2019, I made $7,500 in my podcast, in my podcast, in my side hustle. $7,500 $7,500 in my side hustle. The next year in 2020, I made 30, 35,000, 32 or 35. I feel like it's $35,000 $35, in my side hustle. 2021, I made $150,000 in my side hustle. At the end of that year, I left my job. 2022 was my first year as a full-time entrepreneur. And, and there's been a lot of life between then and now that has happened. And, and a lot of good, amazing things, hard things, but good, amazing things. So What's been so fun about this podcast is I'm able to even look back at where I started and where I'm at now. And I can tell you the truth. I'm pretty, I'm pretty like, wow, did that really happen? (laughs) So what I want to share again is just like, you got to get started. Whatever your big dreams are, you have to start. And I want you to start today. Starting today might be sitting down and taking time to dream. What do I want to do? What is the side hustle I want to start? What is the big audacious goal I have? Getting started might be writing it down, getting it out of your head, writing it down, making a plan, but you have to get started. Do not wait until life is perfect. It will never be perfect. Do not wait until you know all the things. You're only going to know the things by doing the things and you're not going to know it unless you do it. Get started, my friends. (laughs) Then keep going. It's not enough just to start. A lot of people start and fail. I look back to 2019 watching all the other entrepreneurs around me. A lot of them aren't here today or they've gone back to traditional jobs. You have to keep going. Understand the journey is full of ups and downs. You will fail. Be okay with that. And that leads me to my next thing of getting the right rooms with the right people. Find people doing what you want to do. Pay them money to learn from them. Surround yourself with people who are doing such amazing things that it wants you to do amazing things. A rising tide raises all ships. And find people who are going to see in you what you cannot see in yourself yet. Over time, as they continue to speak truth into your life and they see who you are and they, you know, call out all those amazing things that you are, eventually you start believing them and then you get more confident and then you do the thing more. So that is just, I guess, my parting words with you guys. Get started, keep going and get in the right rooms. Thank you so much for listening to the Dietitian Side Hustle podcast. It has been an honor to share all of this over the last 200 episodes. I I wish I can count the minutes of how many minutes that is a podcast episodes because it's a lot. I am looking forward to continuing sharing episodes. If you guys ever want to like hear me talk about something in particular, you want a special guest, just reach out and let me know. I'm happy to, you know, create whatever type of content you guys want. And as always, feel free to reach out to me on social media, via email. However, I always love hearing from you guys. I truly, truly do. So thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode where I just kind of babbled and reflected on the past 200 episodes. If you want to learn about all the ways we could work together, go to katydodd.com. That is my Linktree page. And I will see you all on the podcast next week. (laughs) Bye, guys.